No, I don't see you. What do you mean? Ah, okay. No, I can see you. All right. Uh, I'm talking to Alex Espinosa, one of my friends, uh, close friends, and previously my client, actually, uh, who is in Canada. And uh, I'm here to talk specifically on what is happening at the U.S.-Mexico border, how many thousands of people who are trying to come in and cross the wall, and uh, how they are uh, dreaming of getting the refugee status, the asylum status in in, in U.S. and 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 so forth. What happens? So, uh, Alex, tell me uh, what what do you know about the what the story developing at the U.S. border? What what is your feel and what is your take of of things happening at the border? Well, what I think is happening that the um, pressure on the economics in Central America. It's uh, made the people get together and come through Mexico. Uh, it's from all over, most of the places in Central America. I guess it's except in Costa Rica and Panama, but all, all the rest are coming. Okay. Uh, but most of the people are from Honduras. Also, um, I guess just in the very beginning, uh, started with one group of people I think it's from around 5,000 people. Uh, some of the people were, was, I mean, returned, no, no was returned. They, they returned by, by themselves, thinking that um, going to Mexico um, helped. Yeah. It was kind of a trap. So what happened was um, they were uh, returned to their countries. So, but after that, they, they looked like the people who uh, persisted on their objective to go to the border of Me U.S. Mexico. So, what they what they, they did is they they know that that's the way. So, more people get together and go through another five thousand people, and then again five thousand people. They all go. They all adding adding up. Uh, what I have to ask you is. Uh, do many people who are in this caravan, migrant caravan, they're trying to come to, um, to come to the U.S. border and they're applying for refugee, the asylum status? Uh, is there? Do they have to pay money to be on the caravan? Are smugglers are charging any money? I heard some report that people were charging about ten thousand, fifteen thousand dollars to bring them in the big truck and caravan, bring there. So there are some people who are making money by bringing them people, or they're coming on their own for free. Well, they're coming for, for themselves for free. Now, before that, there there's some people, traffickers, uh, uh, that they know the way to go to the United States. So when when that happens, they uh, but they, but before that, they were they were scammed by by Mexico, all Mexico by the authorities. Authorities yeah. are not authorities, but but most of the authorities they scam they they scam the people to go there. They also disappear a lot of people. So what happened is the um, now that the people are able to go all over to the border, so they are um, expecting to get the uh, refugee process. But they know that it's going to be hard. So what they're doing is, I guess, most of not most of them, but some of the people are uh, using the coyotes to go to United States. Now, <laughs> all of the people it are uh, getting in just one place, co coincidentally, I don't know why, but because the Mexican border has like uh, 3,000 kilometers, more than 3,000 kilometers, over two miles, or, or 2,000 yeah. miles. That's so, okay. but all of them are in one place, Tijuana. There's a problem in your microphone, I think. It's a, large, it's, it's a larger problem, okay. I, I have to stop that, that one. Can you please wait for uh, for ten seconds? I, I I have to stop an alarm. Okay, okay, go ahead and stop the alarm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the alarm is causing that uh, sound problem. Uh, thousands and thousands of people are um, coming to the border, and they're hoping to cross over in the hope of winning the refugee and asylum status in America. But, you know, many people do not realize or they they don't know at all that it takes several years before you get the asylum status in America. First of all, you have to 
be scheduled for a hearing first by the U.S. Customs Border Protection, the border officer, and then they will refer you to a hearing judge, and the judge will, and there, I mean, there are thousands and thousands of cases pending, and then who knows, maybe your hearing will come after six months, after one year, and we don't know how long, and then they have to be bonded. It used to be catch and release that they will tell you, okay, now you have to come later on, and your your hearing will be after one year, and by the time one year, you know, people are disappeared. They don't know where they are. Maybe they are all over U.S. They can they can go to uh, New York or Maine or Florida. Who knows where they are disappeared? So the system of catching them and first releasing them so that they can be heard again. That's that's Trump doesn't like it, and I think that's stopped now. And plus, also in addition, uh, sometimes if they have mothers and children, the children will be also detained separately in a separate. Uh, uh, you know, separate camp. So that's even dreadful. Uh, and uh, this is this is happening. What I don't understand is that uh, many of these people, uh, they are all they are all uh, many repeat. Uh, uh, let me just uh, cancel this call first. They are they are all uh, repeat travelers to United States. Many of them have been previously deported from U.S. They are back again with a new passport, new ID or maybe that's the same, they're coming back. Many people, I was looking at some reports, many people have been in U.S. four or five times and coming back and forth again and again and again and again. They don't stop going to, uh, you know, going to America. They love America so much, they, they want to come back again. And this has been going on for many years. Uh, the Trump administration and the U.S. Uh, immigration system is so, um, you know, strained under these uh, many people who are undocumented in America, close to about 10 to 11 million people who have no card, no paperwork, forget about green card, no, nothing. And, uh, you know, uh, on, on top of that, U.S. politics is, uh, is all about getting votes. You know, if they start talking about converting these migrants into green card and they will possibly lose votes from the conservative uh, block uh, of, the, of the voter base, so that's another problem. You know, many of these uh, migrants, I think even from, from Central America or wherever they are, uh, and I think they are fleeing Honduras and uh, Venezuela and one of those, there's a lot of lot of political problem going on in those countries. And- well, I, don't, I don't think these people from Venezuela. They're not from Venezuela. They are, they are from Honduras, Nicaragua. And Honduras, Nicaragua, uh, and El Salvador. And El, El Salvador. Yeah. So, so are are they able to? They they are not very educated people, though, right? They are farm laborers and you know people working on the street. They are not very educated. There's no education. They don't have any education. They don't have to. Have they don't have education. education. So there's, there's because what you said it, it's true. They they were over and over over like and over they, again. Over. They 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 take everything what they can about the, the, yeah. their job, and then eventually they. Pull them out. <laughs> so it's just a as a game, I guess. And, and I just, uh, yeah. But but uh, let me ask you this: uh, among all these migrant caravans, there are not enough people, or not many people from Mexico with the Mexican passports. They are coming over. Mexican peoples are not coming. In in that caravan, in that uh, not. Not I don't remember how, how you see caravan in, in that uh, group of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, but Mr. Trump has called this a migrant caravan. Caravan means means like thousands of people, uh, you know, coming in one block, like you know, they are like a procession of people, little with one single. And I'm wondering, I think they've been traveling from Central America all the way till uh, till Tijuana border. It's been like thousands of kilometers. It's not like one day. It's been traveling for one month or so. How they are eating and how they are sleeping and with no food. Sometimes mothers are carrying babies in there. You know, they. I mean, it must be very desperate that they think they don't want to go back to the countries, and then they just really want to enter the U.S. at any cost, anything. So, what, yeah, what do you that, think? What What do you think is what, what do you think is the mood now? I mean, I don't think the the Trump administration is very friendly to them. What What are, What What is likely their plan now? Well, Mexico is giving to them um, like like asylum, you know. And oh. they, 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 Mexico can grant them a permanent residence or uh, work permit, actually. Oh. Because uh, some people, it's um, 
also coming out, out of their conscious because of the criminality. Uh, but the thing is, Mexico, they, they, they don't want to stay in Mexico. They want to go to the uh, United States. That's right. That's right. And lots of people, most of them, have relatives in the United States. Now, what Mexico is giving is as much as they can, because Mexico it's always has been a welcome immigrants. You know, Mexico, in one part of the history, uh, uh, get one million of people from all, all of South America, also from uh, Europe too, from Spaniards, but not, not the Spaniards that invaded Mexico in the 400s, no, the, the last uh, century. And so Mexico is very welcome. Now Mexico, the, the thing of Mexico is this, uh, 10,000 people in a country that has uh, 120 million, which is Mexico, it's like a drop in the sea. It's almost yeah. nothing, you know. Yeah. And they can they can have him, but uh, but right now they they want to go to the United States. So they have him in camps. They give him some tents, give him some privacy, and they have uh, let's say tents or hundreds pro probably of uh, washrooms and things like that. And they are actually um, giving them some part of the sports, uh, like uh, recreation centers, uh, Mexican recreation centers, which are not very, very comfortable. They are not really good, but they, they, there's also places that they can take the showers. People in Mexico are being cooking and giving them some some food, but Mexico is also giving them some, some food, the, the Mexico government. The yeah. new, new government is it's getting better and better. You know, you know what I was thinking is uh, uh, we have we have uh, learned about the country like Uruguay. You know, Uruguay is a very advanced country and uh, much more rich than Central American countries. Why why won't some of the people actually go to Uruguay and work there and live there? Because they don't know. They don't know that uh, Uruguay is really good. They, and they, Uruguay is very open. You, yeah. you can go Uruguay as a tourist. And they start working, they will give you a work permit. I, I was thinking of going there. Remember, I told you, you know, yeah. I, I I heard uh, so many things about Uruguay and I love uh, things. What I heard about Uruguay, the president uh, driving the small car, you know, <laughs> you know, it's, it's like an open society. And plus also one of the first countries in the world where where they made, uh, you know, pot free, the the what, what Canada has, uh, the you know, the marijuana free, uh, you know, open. And uh, I think you, if, I mean, it is amazing that people, these people who are living in that area, I mean, they are in Central America, not far from South America, they could easily uh, avoid all this misery and go to Europe way and live there and work there and make money and, you know, something, whatever that, that can happen. If but they, they $10,000 to come to the US, they can utilize those $10,000, get over there, settle down and start working, you know, um, Recently, the, uh, uh, what I'm going to tell you, it's a uh, construction worker makes over there, let's say, probably $1,700 uh, $1, a month, uh -huh. uh, U.S. dollars a month. U.S. dollars, oh, yeah. Yeah, it's very good salary, you know, it's lots better than Mexico. And with all of the warranties, they have um, certain health insurance. They also have um, unemployment insurance if they yeah. have to stop them because they reduce the force of workforce. They they get let's say six months um, unemployment insurance, and it, it's a very very wealthy country. It's only three and a half million of people, but they they have a very high agriculture. They have thirteen and a half million of Cows or cattle. Yeah, Uruguay looks like Uruguay looks like Canada to me. In a way, yeah, <laughs> and, and it's the less criminality in, in all Latin America, and it's one uh -huh. of the safest in the world. Mm -hmm. They are, they are also the gap in between the poor and the rich is very short. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, yeah, they have to pay from those seventeen hundred US dollars. They have to pay lots of taxes, but it's lots of return in, in benefits, you know, probably let's say 40% of that. Mm -hmm. 
goes goes to what uh, towards the uh, towards taxes, but it's lots of benefits. Yeah, mm. they have also very good uh, health system. Uh, internet, you know, all uh, CBD. Yeah, you um, you you seems like you you seem like you miss going to Uruguay. Yes, I do for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I I wanted to I wanted to visit Uruguay once actually. I just didn't have time, but I still I still look forward to go to Uruguay at some point of time, uh, and then see how it goes. But in in um, in Mexico right now, uh, the the people who have Mexican passports they still can come to Canada without visa with just an electronic travel authorization ETA. Do you remember? Uh, yes. And, yes. And, and this is. And this is a, uh, you know, as we we have we have discussed this before that people who have Mexican passports, whether they are in U.S. illegally or they are in Mexico City, wherever they are, as long as they have a valid Mexican passport, they can come to Canada by just paying seven dollars and applying for electronic visa on online. You know, they don't have to line up in the Canadian embassy, yep. and. And then get a ETA is valid only for 90 days. I think I I didn't check last time. Maybe possibly for 90 days. I but, don't know how long, but, but yeah. yeah. They and they can they can come to Canada legally. They don't have to cross any border. Nothing. Just just fly and then come here. And eventually, if they are looking for any job or maybe something, maybe you know they can search for an employer. Maybe qualify for a work permit if if they have a job. Or they can do a study course, or you know, some people will just come and marry or something. So this this is a this is a great provision given only to uh, only to Mexico Mexico uh, maybe because of NAFTA or something. But I I don't think many people know about this. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Know about this in in in, uh, in Latin America actually that you know you you can you can come uh, especially Mexico that you can come. Uh, without the visa, only with the ETA. Yeah, unfortunately, they they only know the squeezy uh, culture. You know, yeah, I gonna get there and then get a job under the under the right. table, and that's that's a good because Canada is not um, it's not good for that that's <clears> as right. US is. Yeah. Uh, US you can do because US the US culture is kind of that because they 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 get uh, the taxes from the people that work illegally over there but they don't yeah. return anything to the people and they can uh, pull them out any time that they can that they want. Yeah. Okay, well I guess uh, we will leave it to that. I, I I believe you know the Trump administration must be thinking of something. Maybe what do you think about uh, one last uh, comment about the wall? You know, the President Trump wants to build a big wall, a high wall that nobody can jump and nobody can come in. What What do you think that uh, people in Mexico think about the wall that uh, President Trump says every time he's on the on the camera? Uh, they, uh, they they think he's doing really bad, but the new government. That we are having, Mexico is doing some cartoons uh, uh, to stop the people coming to the US for the necessity. Yeah, yeah. he started uh, building one wall, not, not building, but constructing one wall in in south uh, of Mexico uh, with lots of jobs. You know, he's planting uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, trees, you know, reforesting, and then also for the food. And if that's permanent job, and then also uh, it's going to be a big train in the Mayan yeah. Uh, area. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. also it's going to be another building, uh, a train in between the two oceans in the, in the short part of Mexico, they call it Ismo. Yeah. So also it's another one um, giving better taxes and better conditions to put uh, some enterprises in the border of Mexico, US. Uh, so it's going to be, he's building lots of things. Now, the last thing I heard that uh, uh, Mexican president and the Manuel Lopez Obrador uh, talked to Trump um, was last night. And uh, he said that he's insisting uh, to US and Canada 
to have to get, to get together to put uh, more investment into the Central America mm -hmm. countries to build uh, companies mm -hmm. to be able to keep the people in their communities instead of uh, having to come to the north part to get jobs for food. Yesterday, yesterday, the president of Venezuela said that the U.S. is trying to kill them. Yeah, they have lots of oil. So what they there are lots of oil, and then he he was on the camera, and I, I guess also you know a lot of Russian uh, defense forces and Russian uh, planes and everybody are in Venezuela, and they have big bombers and big sitting right at the foot foot of uh, Latin America, and then you know America is worried. Uh, how come these people are right in this continent? You know, and that that bomber is a supersonic bomber. It flies like twice the speed of sound. It can it can probably reach from there to Miami within a few hours. Uh, yeah, well, I I guess uh, they are trying to defend, uh, even if they are blocked um, by the politics. Uh, mm -hmm. They are trying to survive, and I think today they're doing great. So they are um, having some investments from uh, from Russia, also from. Uh, China, also they, they they recently have some other visitors from, from some places, but they are doing very very good uh, over there. Yeah, uh, President uh, Nicolas Maduro is saying that the U.S. is trying to assassinate him. Then we start of World War Three in right here in the North North American continent. So, um, well, we don't know what happens. But hey, I'm I'm extremely pleased about the the role of. You know the the power of the Mexico and Mexican people to come uh, to, and I still still wonder why they continue going going to Los Angeles or other places in uh, in Texas. You know, through through um, through underground or undocumented through coyotes, uh, they could just uh, you know apply for ETA and come here. Uh, they may not like the snow. But I, I guess I guess Canada has an opportunities for them. Well, we'll yes, leave we, it. We'll leave it at there. I'm sorry. Say, say it again. We will. We will leave. Uh, leave the politics at there because we don't control anything. Yeah. And I. And I just wanted to get the feedback from you from from your side. And uh, and uh, that's uh, you know, we'll we'll follow up as as the things changes. I have been to I have been to the Tiana border actually I I want I've been to that border and I saw how many people cross that border every day there are thousands thousands like I mean I mean it's it's like busy like hell I mean uh, I was I was surprised at how many people are crisscrossing on a daily basis uh, at at that place and many Americans many Americans living in Mexico they are yeah. they are coming back and forth and you know they. Yeah. There are millions of uh, people from the United States living currently in Mexico yeah. because it because it is cheaper and you get uh, and you get a fresh fresh tortillas and, and <laughs> <laughs> well you know what the, the the gap in between the poor and the rich is very very big. very uh -huh. big is one of the biggest uh -huh. uh, so that's why people with not too many money not too much money they can go and live very over the very wealthy. Yeah, maybe I'm thinking of actually going retiring in Mexico. <laughs> it tends to go to Guadalajara Beach or maybe one of those places, and uh, you know, can have a good time, especially escape the winter from Canada and then be in Mexico for some time. Right. Hey, thank you very thank much. You. Uh, thank you very thank much you. for joining, and uh, I'll uh, talk to you later, brother. Take care.